thank you everyone for coming. I'm Frank Etanello, as Jasmine uh, pointed out, and thank you guys for organizing this. Um, I think this is, um, this is an important topic, and this is something I came to look into kind of coming into my chief year around 2014 and realizing that, you know, as a med student in your position, I wanted to do neurosurgery. I was, looked good on paper, but I, I was trying to lose what it was that I wanted to do. And you guys aren't there yet, but you start dealing with patient outcomes and families and demands. And neurosurgery is plenty full of work and hours. And that's what everyone thinks is hard about it, but there's so much more. And in the end, I just wanted to know what it was that was making people not get to their best selves. Because I think a lot of you are sitting there thinking, well, that's not me. Other people are going to burn out. I'll be fine. But in the end, I think it's, it's something real. And whether or not that leads to you not doing what you want at the minimum and possibly quitting neurosurgery or worse, that's what you really want to avoid. And this can even happen on a low level. So um, to begin, uh, you know, this focus came into the national picture right after I kind of paid attention to it myself and I started to see the early publications on this topic. And basically the idea is the Surgeon General pointed out that it was a, a major public issue, especially among physicians. 54% of doctors say they're burned out, 88% of doctors are moderately to severely stressed, and almost 60% of these doctors aren't telling their children to do it. I don't know what those numbers are for neurosurgery, but I can imagine they're similar or worse. Uh, so we published this study, and we ended up looking at about a third of the residents, one through seven, in their year of training across the country, uh, basically everyone that responded. And we used a validated survey specifically looking at uh, the, um, the ability of, um, uh, uh, like, it's actually a psychological profile. And that profile ended up uh, evaluating three different components of burnout. And those three components are emotional exhaustion on the left here, depersonalization, and personal accomplishment. And as you see here, maybe just look specifically at the people in high. And what these are is emotional exhaustion is probably what most people think of when they think of depression or not doing well. And that's not being your best. And depersonalization is where you don't feel connected to your work. Um, the, uh, the patients aren't the center of your world and they're not, they're not, their outcomes almost don't completely matter the way they should to you. And for different specialties, it's different what that outcome means, but in, um, neurosurgery, it's, it's your patient outcomes, which is really significant and personal accomplishment. Neurosurgeons don't quite have as big a problem with this. As people kind of lose even the good personal accomplishment they felt at that point and probably far feel far lower than they should because of this complex issue affecting their outcomes. I'm not here to tell you guys that don't go into neurosurgery. This isn't to talk you out of it. I'm telling you guys what to look into so you know how to be your best selves. Because in the end, uh, a large study of attending neurosurgeons and even in our own study show that the majority are still satisfied with their career as a neurosurgeon. It's not that they're regretting the the positive outcomes the patients uh, the patients that do do well the patients that end up being thankful but you have a lot of people that um are burning out and that's the part we're really focused on um a lot of this has to do with your program and you know you guys are going into an interview season where unfortunately we're affected by covid but uh this area i've circled here and you know all these factors are important from our study but you see that 79% of people would still choose to do neurosurgery again. So yes, it's unfortunate that 20% wishes they did another specialty, but a larger percentage wish they'd gone somewhere else. And granted, this is a self-survey, but you see a lot of people are pinpointing where it is that they are, uh, their program itself. Maybe it's the people, maybe it's location, whatever it is, they don't blame the field. They blame that fit. And you can again argue that no, that wouldn't have fit them anywhere and they're just attributing it, but it might be something specific to the area and not the patient. So do what you can despite this COVID era to look at really the program you're going into because uh, I saw some of the slides earlier. A lot of people do have a good 
sense of control over what it is they're going to do in their first or second choice matching. So fit is very important. It's not just about uh, name, recognition, location. It's, it's how you feel when you're there. Um, I, when I talk to residents in our program and when they come to me with you know, various difficulties at different stages or even just in normal mentoring, uh, I think a big point we would like to make is what's shown in this graph. And this is our results kind of tracked over time for different residents. So from first to seventh year, they have differing outcomes. And uh, what you want to do is probably look at the orange, that's burnout. And satisfaction is a little bit uh, kind of the opposite of this. So satisfaction is in blue at the top here. And then orange is burnout. So you start very low. Uh, relatively low, 62% burnout. So among the interns, um, it's not low um, by any means, but compared to the averages, it's, it's relatively low. Then after that intern year, you really, for most programs, start to get into the meat of neurosurgery where you're primarily taking responsibility and you kind of spike to the highest level of burnout you're gonna see. That over time slowly decreases and eventually decreases by year six and to the point where you're at 50, 49%. And then improves a little bit by seventh year where you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But the point is it does eventually get better. And you do see these attendings long-term feeling a lot better uh, in those later surveys. Um, let me see, next slide. So a lot of these factors, you know, you have a little bit of control of before the uh, match. But in the end, um, once you're in a program, a lot of it is up to you. Um, not just recognizing kind of your own status and how you feel, but you know, what can you do about it? And mentorship was one of the independent variables in our study associated with burnout, kind of pretty significantly. Um, the relationship with the mentor, as well as the mentorship itself, was really important. So what you see is that you're almost three times more likely uh, to have a kind of less burnout if you have a good mentor, not just a, uh, sorry, my son's in the background, uh, not just a um, mentor period, although that mentorship period does help uh, in our univariate analysis. But if you have a strong relationship with a mentor, and many of the people talking to you today are like that, um, it's someone who's actually invested in your outcome, is there whenever you need, not just fulfilling your duty, but actually looking out for your outcome as their, their outcome variable for them. Um, you are going to have a better outcome, and it really grounds you as to your future. So I have this little picture, and there's kind of many different ways of looking at a good mentor. In the end, it's someone you connect with and is always willing to help you, but um, these are little components of what helps. So, you know, what else affects it? Well, of course, outside of work does affect it. And that's a big function of not just your co-residents, but your kind of home life. And that will affect it as well as your operative experience. So I think a big point, now that you're going into the match for you fourth years, as well as kind of everyone else looking at in the long term, is, um, Operative experience, for most of us, is why we went into neurosurgery. We want to do something with our hands while you know, supplementing with research or patient care. But in the end, that operative experience has to be a key component. You need to get in the OR. You need to be doing something um, or you're burning out almost seven times as much. So um, exposure is important. And different programs have different kind of philosophies on that. Everyone in the end will get into the OR. But I think keep that in mind as a kind of critical predictor of how much you're gonna feel like this was worth it. Um, other factors just in general to point out that were associated with more satisfaction and less burnout, you know, kind of inverses of each other. So involvement in national meetings, this is kind of the chicken and the egg thing, you know, are they feeling better so they're going to national meetings or vice versa? It's kind of my feeling just anecdotally that it's both. I mean, you go to the national meetings and it gives you perspective on why you're doing this in the first place because you're really kind of in the trenches when you're a resident and you take a step back and realize that the world of neurosurgery is moving forward it's a really big world and it's a social one that you fell in love with and that's why you applied to such a hard field socializing co-residents outside i can't stress enough that co-residents are kind of key component you know my co-residents and i will tell each other all the time are the reasons we were successful um doing well both the residency and even beyond we still keep in touch weekly um an accurate perception of neurosurgery as a medical student i think this is really just exposing yourself. A lot of people say they didn't know they were, what they were getting into. And um, this kind of points to that as well. Um, this is univariate analysis, but feeling inadequate for your level of training, 
again, that dovetails a lot of other factors. A lot of these overlap. You know, if you're not feeling like you're in the OR, if you don't feel like you're being exposed enough, then you might feel inadequate. Um, lack of appreciation from your patients or your faculty, lack of control. Control in general in psychiatry and psychology studies is huge in predicting people's level of stress and satisfaction. But if you don't feel like you have any control over what it is you're doing, your future, that's difficult. Mentors will help with that. They'll put things into perspective. And then lack of academic productivity. Um, I think most of you, you know, you have academic aspirations. And again, if you're not doing what you set out to do, I think it's difficult. Other factors not affecting burnout. Um, I think this was something I really wanted to point out, but, and I don't think people are considering this as real, but the gender, gender doesn't affect burnout at all. Um, in the end, it's, it's really a conglomeration of all those other factors, at least in our analysis that does. And neither does relationship status and whether or not you have children. So um, I kind of rushed through this, but final thoughts. I think the main things I want people to take away from this is to be aware of their mental state. Um, you know, it's not, you know, neurosurgery is hard enough without um, having to deal with uh, the difficulty of um, all those factors I mentioned, a difficult environment, a lack of mentorship, et cetera. Um, you want good people around you. You want to know where you stand and you want, if you're having a problem to go to the right people. And that leads to my second point, find a mentor. And, you know, if you can, good, good co-residents and um, social support, because uh, your mentor is going to be able to keep your eyes on the prize. They're going to keep you on that narrative of you know, not losing why you were going to neurosurgery in the first place and keep you doing what you need to do. Um, and then, as I mentioned just above again, take advantage of those resources, your co-residents, your family. Um, and you know, those are all kind of add together to get you the right academic operative resources and national meetings. So um, I'm a, about a minute early, but thank you. <laughs> Everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.